So um, what is different about the Judeo-Christian worldview is how we treat our enemies. Other religions, especially the second world, secular world, don't tell you to love your enemies. They tell, uh, they don't tell you to pray for them, not take advantage of you. Nope. The secular world seeks to pay back for being wronged. Um, Matthew 5, 43 to 44. You have heard that it hath been said, that it has been said in the old time, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So the way you treat your enemies can provide a witness that you represent Christ. So how do we go about doing this? How do we go about treating it? Our enemies. How do we treat? How does the Bible say we should treat our enemies? Well, it starts with the heart. We should want the best for them, especially we would want them to come to Christ. Proverbs twenty four seventeen. Rejoice not when thy enemy falls. Let thine heart be glad. Let not thine heart be glad. When he stumbles. So we're talking about your enemies. Those who you dispute with. Those who you don't uh, get along with. Do not rejoice when uh, he comes falling to misfortune. Do not uh, let your heart be glad when he uh, gets stumbles in misfortune. Ultimately we should pray that he should repent and turn from his wicked ways. Also, when your enemies are by the way, uh, don't be stuck up, be kind, and say hello to them. Matthew 5, 46, 47, For if you love them which love you, what word do you? Do not even the publicans have the same, do the same? If you salute your brother and only, what, what do you do more than others? So if you only love those who love you back, what are you doing more than the lost world? If you say hello to your brother and only, what are you doing more than the lost people? So, um, we should, especially if you see your enemy, by the way, and he has need, help him, like the par like we see in the parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, 30 37. There was a man that came up, uh, came from Jerusalem to Jericho. Along the way, robbers jumped him and beat him up and left him for dead. No one wanted to help him, but a certain Samaritan took him home, took care of him, and when he was well, he sent him away with provisions. When Jesus ended his parable, Jesus told them to have mercy, like uh, the Samaritan had mercy, uh, had mercy on this uh, poor man. So we're to show mercy. So when your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink. In doing so, thou shalt keep coals of fire on his head, Romans 12, 20. He'll get his just reward. He, he'll be, be, feel ashamed. Um, so, so don't take vengeance in your own hands to punish them. Remember, there's only one judge, and that judge is in heaven, which is the Lord, your God. Let God take care of it. The wrongdoer will get his just reward. Romans 12, 19 says, Dear beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather... Give place unto wrath, for it's written, Vengeance is mine, I'll repay, says the Lord. So what do we do? What should we do to our enemies? So remember, um, do not, uh, when someone wrongs you, do not do something more evil than he has, your enemy has done to you. Um, but do good unto him. Bless them that curse you. Um, uh, pray for them that takes advantage of you. So Romans 12, 21 says, Do not overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. So when we repay, uh, when we repay being wronged with doing good unto others, we do show um, that we are good witness for Christ. So we'll see you next time.